Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Have you ever taken on a commission with really poor photo reference and then later on regretted it? Well then this video might be for you. In this video I want to give you some tips on how you can go about asking a client for better photo reference and how you can work with them to try and get you the photo reference that you need to be able to create a good painting. I hope that you find this helpful. If you do, then please do subscribe here on my YouTube channel. Also, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I make new videos. And you might want to consider checking me out on my Patreon channel, where there, for a small subscription, you'll get access to my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and lots more. Having been a pet portrait artist for over 12 years now, I have encountered all sorts of photo reference. The good, the bad and the ugly. I've had it all. And over the years, I must say, I've got better at saying the word no. Sometimes I will take on a difficult commission when I really feel that I want to produce something for the client. And sometimes I have to work a bit of magic with some difficult photo reference. So I'm not saying to never do that because honestly, some of my best paintings have come out of pretty dodgy photo reference. But maybe that's a whole other video to give you some tips on how to improve the photo reference that you're going to work with. But in this video, I really wanna focus on how to create a working relationship with your client and make them understand the importance of you having the best photo reference possible to work from. And I think sometimes that involves us being a little bit more brave or firm as an artist, as sometimes we're a bit scared to really be honest with our client because we're usually scared of losing out on the job. So in this video, I wanna try and help you be more assertive in a friendly and professional way but in a way that's also going to mean that your clients get your best work more of the time. As quite often, what I have found in later years is that my client appreciates my input and trusts my knowledge of all of this enough to work with me a little bit. Now, obviously there are times when it's not possible to get better photos. I paint a lot of animal portraits where the animal has passed away. And in those cases, you really are stuck working with just the photo references that exist at that time. So in this video, I'm really only talking about the times where it's possible for your client to take more photographs for you. And as the years have gone on, I've got braver and braver at asking my clients again and again to go back and take more photographs. And you know what I find? Most of the time, they're really excited to be a part of the process and they will usually go again and again and try and get you the reference that you're really looking for. So I wanna take you through the journey of creating this painting as it began long before I ever put pastel to paper. It began with a lovely relationship with my client for this piece and I'm using her as a prime example of someone who was willing to work with me and to keep going back and trying again and again to get that perfect photo reference for the perfect portrait. And I really believe that it paid off for her with this piece. So with her kind permission to show you all of this, let's have a look now at the journey through the photo references that led to getting the perfect shot for me to work from and give you some vital tips to help you be braver with your clients too. Let's start off with a couple of the photographs that my client first sent me with their initial inquiry. So these two photos are what I first saw, along with a small selection of other photographs of the dogs, but all pretty similar to this type of shot. So they're not terrible, it's good lighting. From this I can clearly see that the dogs will actually stay still and you can get their attention. Um, so I can judge from this that the dogs are able to pose nicely because some dogs just never stop moving and they're really hard to photograph. 
that type of client is going to be a little bit more difficult to help. But when I see a client who has dogs who already know how to pose and behave well in front of the camera, I instantly think, great, we can get better than this. So I got her initial inquiry, which asked for a painting which included both of these beautiful dogs and also to include her lovely garden as the backdrop. So my first reaction was to tell her all of the things that worked well with these shots, but then to ask her to try taking some more shots and to arm her with a list of tips which will help her to get a better shot that I can work from. Firstly, I asked her if she could possibly get the two dogs to pose together, as that would make my life a lot easier in trying to piece this together. So the next shot that I got from her was this, and I was over the moon to see this in my inbox because it confirmed that she has two beautiful dogs who know how to pose, and they're posing like pros in this photograph. But I did have some criticisms with this as well, so we weren't finished at this point. It was a shame that it was such a dull day, and coming from Ireland, I know what that's like, and you can wait for quite a while to get a sunny day in Ireland. But that's what I asked her to do. I asked her to wait for a brighter day and to try again with a very similar pose, not to change anything else, but to try and get a bit more colour for me to work from. So this is the next shot that she sent me through and we are each time heading in the right direction. This time, again, we've got the dogs posing, maybe not quite as good as the poses in the previous shot, but still showing that the dogs are willing to work with her. And we've got sunshine and you can see what a difference that makes to the previous shot. So much more color for me to work from, a little bit of light and shade, I'm loving the shadows on the ground. But I did criticize this one a little bit as well. I asked her, could she move to some other parts of the garden and see what different backdrops we could get? Because I could see in some of the other shots that she sent me that she had a lot of color and flowers, and I felt like we weren't really getting much of that in this shot. And the same with this particular picture. Again, we've got the lovely sunlight happening here. The pose is so much better of the dogs. They're really sitting nicely together. But again, I did suggest that perhaps she could take this idea and move it around her garden a little bit to try and find the most pleasing backdrop for me to paint. So finally, she sent me through this. And the joy of opening your emails from a client when they've gone to this amount of effort to get you such fantastic photo reference. I was so happy to see this shot come through. It just ticked all of the boxes. It was everything I was hoping for. A, a terribly complicated background for me to paint, of course, but I felt like this shot would be worth it. And the client, I think, was using a camera phone, which is the beauty of technology these days. Almost every client you encounter will have or have access to a smartphone. And the quality of smartphone cameras these days is awesome. So everybody has a great quality camera at their fingertips. So I took this shot, though, and brought it into Photoshop because Camera phones, of course, have their limitations when it comes to really bright sunlight like this. You can see that everything's a little bit dark looking, but I know that those things are easy for me to fix. As long as I've got the setting and the pose of the dogs and the quality, the resolution that's there for me to work from, I can work some magic with the color. So I took this shot into Photoshop and I really heightened all of the colors. I lightened it. I added a lot of vibrance to it. I tried to imagine what this scene would have looked like if I was stood there in person. And I actually went overboard. I really exaggerated the colors in the photo reference just to give me lots to work with in my painting. So this was the shot that I ended up recreating in the painting, but we really went from quite mediocre photographs in the beginning to a really professional photograph for me to work from. And if I hadn't have asked my client to do all of that, I would never have got that wonderful shot that I ended up working with. 
So a few tips when you're working with your client. First of all, find out if the animals are available to be able to take more photographs. If the client says that they want the portrait to be a surprise and they really can't get access to the animal to get more photographs, really try to talk them out of this because they're going to have the painting for the rest of their lives or the person that they gift the painting to will have it forever. And it's more important that they get the painting right than that they get to gift it as a surprise. It's always more important to get the painting spot on. So don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to ask them a second or a third time to go back and take more shots. Give them lots of feedback, include the positives that you can see in their photo reference and then give them advice based on what could be better. So one common mistake that I see a lot of the time is where they are holding the camera too high up, so looking down on top of the animal. And if you can see an animal posing beautifully in the shot, but it's just that the person is looking at them from the wrong angle, it's very simple just to say to them, can you take that again? Only this time, bring the camera right down to the animal's eye level. That one tip has got me so much better photo reference to work from, just that one tip. If you would like to see more of my tips on photographing animals, I have got a video here on YouTube all about how to photograph an animal for their portrait. And also on Patreon, I've released a helpful guide which you can email to your client, giving them lots of very simple tips and things to think about when they're taking the photo. So it's really important that you, the artist, knows how to get the best shot of an animal. And that's something that you should practice doing, taking photographs of animals where you can, dealing with different lighting, seeing how it works. I've photographed so many animals for their portraits in the past that it has given me a lot of knowledge and experience and therefore I find it quite easy to help a client even when they're in another country. So just try not to forget that you are the artist and the likeliness is your client is paying for your skills and your vision. And when that comes to working from other people's photo reference, there is still a lot that you can do to inject your vision into that portrait. So I really hope that you find this helpful as it's one of the many things that I've learned over all of the years that I've been doing this. And one of the things that I've got much braver and better at. So if you did find this helpful, then please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Also hit the little bell notification so that you get notified anytime I make a new video. And if you'd like even more help in real-time tutorials, then check me out on my Patreon channel. You can browse all of the real-time tutorials that I have available on my website, emmaculbertart.com. And then for a small monthly subscription, you can get access to all of this via my Patreon channel. But thanks very much for watching here, and until next time, happy pastling.